spoke on the book of Hebrews, a book most probably written by Apostle Paul. I tend to believe it was Paul, although the, the author is unknown and everyone has a take on it. Barnabas and Timothy and this one, that one goes on. But whatever it is, Paul said, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Who would know best to deal with the Hebrews? Amen. Amen. The character was Melchizedek. The characteristic was holiness. And I believe God wants us to be holy even as he is holy. Now when we look at the book of Hebrews, it is very important to know that it deals with the superiority of Christ. In chapter 1 we see Christ is greater than any prophet. Greater than any prophet. He is more superior. Christ is superior. Why? More than any prophet? Because of his deity. He is God himself. Christ is superior to all the angels because angels are created beings but Christ is the creator. Hallelujah! Christ is superior to Moses in all his work. Moses' work was temporal but Christ's work is permanent. Through Moses came the law. The law doesn't give you any solution. The law will only condemn you that you have sinned against God. But it is Christ who steps in and brings the solution. Isn't that wonderful? Christ will bring the solution. When I talk to people, I say, do you have a problem? Or do you want to become a solution? Are you a parasite? Or are you a producer? Are you a spectator? Or you are a participator. Come on. Hallelujah. God has called us all to be assets in the house of the Lord. Not liabilities. In your own home, you don't want liabilities. They ought to help. Okay, the man of the house doesn't have a job. So he better do the cleaning work because the wife is going out to work. We have to share burdens. Amen. Amen. Christ is greater than the Aaronic priesthood. He's greater than Melchizedek. He is greater than the Levitical priesthood. He has given us a better sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats and birds will only cover your sin. But the blood of Yahushua will cleanse you from your sin. Amen. Hallelujah! Isn't that part of work of the Lord? Well, the sanctuary is temporal, but His sanctuary is permanent. He is greater than the sanctuary. His sacrifice is greater than any sacrifice. His sanctuary is greater than any sanctuary. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So are we of the Old Covenant or the New Covenant? The Old Covenant was a shadow, but the New Covenant is the substance. There are five warnings. Are you ready for them? Remember, the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn. He convicts. The first warning is in chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. It's the danger of neglect. Do not neglect your salvation. The second warning is in chapter 3 of Hebrews, verses 7 to 19. And that's the danger of hardening your heart. A hardened heart is an unplowed field which will save value. When Jesus met with his disciples after the resurrection, he rebuked two spirits. The 
hardened heart and the spirit of unbelief. And then he blew into them a refreshing breath and they were revived. Hallelujah. His apostles were like unbelievers. They had the spirit of hardness of heart and they had spirit of unbelief. So Jesus saw them through and through and cast out those two spirits and then replaced it with his breath. Number three, chapter five, verses 11 to 14. Dullness of hearing. You hear, but yet you don't hear. You have to listen for his voice. His voice is there. But there are other voices around and you have to discern what is his voice. So you need not only listen to his voice, but before that, you listen for his voice. When you listen for his voice and you recognize his voice, then you listen to his voice. So dumbness of hearing. Clean out the wax in your ears. The wax comes from the worldly system, the way of thinking of the world, the mindset, the barbarian mindset, the Greek mindset, the philosophical thinking and all Greek mindset. But God wants us to take off the mindset of our background and put on the Hebraic mindset with Christ in the foreground. We don't care which background you come from. You may come from the gutters, you may come from this part of India, that part of India. Now the high court has said the caste never changes. You want to keep people in bondage, right? You don't care which caste you come from and which religion you came from as long as you keep Christ in the foreground. Forget your background. There's nothing to boast about. Paul says, I have nothing to boast of which shunya hai. Hallelujah. It's all, I count it all down. You hear people boasting about their family, about the bank balance, about their properties, about this connect, that connect in high places. I mean, you will always try to connect that you have a man in high place, but you do not want to talk about the uncle who's a drunkard and falling on the roads. The fourth warning is danger of drawing back. Do not backslide. Not Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Aage over. Not Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Kabi Ni, Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Madja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, whistle. Church. It's a very noisy church. Full of whistles. Because it's a lively church. Hallelujah. Danger of drawing back. Don't do it. You've begun in the spirit. Don't end in the flesh. Come on. We are not getting sucked into Judaism. Judaism is the best religion and the only religion given by God to mankind. But that was a scaffolding, a shadow to usher in the substance. But when Christ comes in, you don't have to run after the shadow, you abide in the substance and you are set free. That doesn't mean you don't need the Old Testament. We need the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. And let's move on. And the fifth warning is in chapter 12, verses 25 to 29. And that warning is danger of refusing God. Don't refuse God in your call, in your whatever you do. Look to the Lord. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. 
is a person, not just a force. Hallelujah. But in conclusion of Hebrews, I want to say about chapter 11, all great heroes, starting with Abel, wow, and Enoch, and Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, David, Joseph, Moses' parents, Moses, Joshua, and Rahab, and all the others like Gideon, Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, and David, and the prophets, wow, wow, wow. But the whole chapter ends with two verses. Verse 39 of chapter 11. And all these, all these Old Testament saints, having obtained a good testimony, how? Through faith, amen, did not receive, hello, they obtained it by faith, a good testimony, but they did not receive the promise. Oh, that is why the least in the kingdom of God is greater than the greatest prophet, John the Baptist. Verse 40, God having provided something better. Come on, say better. better. Hallelujah. Not bitter, but better. For us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. They should not be made perfect apart from us. Come on, Christian. You get floored when you read about the Old Testament saints, about their faith, and you say, what is me? I'm just a teeny weeny guy or a teeny weeny girl. Oh, what can I do? But I want to tell you, in Christ, you can do all things. In Christ, you are made complete. You have received the promise of the substance. Jesus Christ. You have received the promise of the Holy Spirit in your life. The paracletos who has come alongside of you and is making you more and more into the image and likeness of His Son. Who is the express image of the Father? No one has seen God. If you see God, you die. Because man is sinful. So God the Father sent His only begotten Son, His replica, to become man, that we as men would understand what God is like. Now, Jesus, the perfect man, the historical man, the prophetic man, the Son of God, God Himself. But Baba, He came 2,000 years ago. There was no photography at that time. I don't know what he looks like. I really don't know. So what did the Lord say? I have given you my Holy Spirit. Inside of me to worship the Father in the Holy Spirit and in truth. Jesus. You don't need a frame. You don't need statues. You don't need symbols to worship. Worship in spirit, from your spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and in truth is the Word of God, Jesus. Worship the Father. The one who worships becomes like the one who worshiped. Therefore, if you worship a monkey, you become more like a monkey. You worship an elephant, you become more like an elephant. I want to worship the perfect man, Jesus. We will get more and more perfect. Hello? Hallelujah. I don't want to get carried away with this wonderful book of Hebrews. But today is the book of James. Now this James, there are various James characters in the Bible by the name of James, but this James we are talking about is the half 
brother of Jesus. The son of Joseph and Mary. Jesus was not the son of Joseph. He was the son of Mary. That is why we say half brother. Jesus had at least four half brothers. And minimum two sisters, but I think they were at least three sisters. So if you go to see, he was the eldest of eight children. Joseph knew Mary only after Jesus was born. So till then she was a virgin until she delivered the baby, Jesus, and was no longer a virgin. Right now, Mary is asleep like all the other saints. She was the first born again Christian. My soul would magnify the Lord and my spirit had rejoiced in God, my Savior. She confessed that she needed a Savior. So don't go on and on with that. But you don't believe in Mary. You do not respect Mary. And it goes on and on. We believe in Mary more than those who worship her. Because she doesn't want to be worshipped. James means supplanter. The formal Jacob of the Old Testament works are to do something for achievement. True good works are done only by God. No one else is God. Good. Only God is good. Amen. And He will cause that goodness to flow through you. Done by grace, God's grace, through obedient, regenerated human spirits with eternal bearing. You may find it too many words, but your regenerated spirit alone can produce good works. By the grace of God and by the word and the spirit of God. Correct? Okay. We have that passage read from James 2, 14 to 17 by Pastor Raj this morning. And so it is very important to know that works without faith is dead. And faith without works is dead. James is not contradicting Apostle Paul. Neither is Apostle Paul contradicting James, but they just both complement each other. If you have faith, then that faith must produce works. If your faith doesn't produce works, then you are not exercising your faith and your faith is dead. Now, if you produce works, without faith, those works are dead without faith. Because all that we have produced before our spirits were regenerated were dead works. The Bible says, like menstrual rags, filthy rags. That's what the Bible says. That's bad blood. But when our spirits are regenerated, we will produce good works. James is talking about trials. Count it all joy when you face fiery trials. Because it's building up character in your life. Temptation doesn't come from God. Temptation comes from the devil. Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't blame God. Oh, God entered me, you know, what to do? Never, never, ever. Jesus was tempted by the devil. Amen. And he overcame that temptation. When you are tempted, it doesn't mean you have sinned. But when you yield to temptation, then sin is conceived. And when it grows, it will lead to death. So, he overcame temptation with the word of God. The saints overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Always sovereignty of God and responsibility of man go hand in hand. So I received the grace of God and I exercised my faith. Amen. We have to be doers of the word. The word of God is like a mirror. You see 
in the middle of God's word, mainly two people. You see Christ, the perfect image, in the word of God. This coming year, we're going to look at the Christ in every book of the Bible. Hallelujah. Because our focus is Christ. In every book, the scarlet thread runs through Genesis to Revelation. Wow. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Redemption for mankind. God could have given us volumes and volumes of information from heaven. But he says, man, you only need this much because I know you wouldn't have had time. Any time, no time, no time, no time. Busy. Busy doing what? Nothing. Will you skip your meals? Will you skip your bath? Will you skip drinking water? Parallelly, the word and the spirit is all those for your spirit. One day, there's some repair work going on and no water comes from the tap. The whole mood swing in the house. Everyone is angry. Everyone is upset because you cannot have a bath. You cannot have a shower. Can you imagine? Do you get upset if you have not read the word of God? Yeah. Do you get upset with not having your quiet time? Do you get upset if you don't pray? These things seem like alien to us. But in the natural we get frustrated, agitated, irritated when we don't get our basic needs met. So it is important, beloved, to think about the spiritual things which are eternal. Hallelujah. So when I look into the mirror, I see the perfect man, but I also see myself naked as I am. The word will give me the honest report of me. So when I see something wrong, I don't turn away. I look into the mirror, you look into the mirror to get dressed up, to rectify the wrong or something out of place, and you set it in place, you set it in order, you set your hair in order, you set everything in order, and then you step out. How about looking into the Word of God, watch His face before you look at people's face. Before you look and face the devil, face God, you'll be a victor and not a victim. Okay? So, this mirror is not just a mirror. It's like that brazen labor with the mirror on the bed of the, the labor, the brass labor, but it has a solution, there's water. So the Levite will look into the mirror, see all the blood spattered on his face, and then he take the water and wash it, cleanse himself, wash himself. So when we look into the mirror of God's word, we get washed with the water of God's word. Your real change and transformation will come into your life when what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, and better counted as the most reasonable service, an act of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. So the key for transformation is the renewal of mind. A new mindset. Take off the old cap of thinking and put on the new cap of the Lord Jesus Christ. The mind of Christ. India will be transformed. Amen. <laughs> Be the ruler of the minds of the people. 
Let not the devil be the ruler. He is not the ruler. He is the controller. He is the controller of the minds of the people. India needs to be set free. Two apostles came here, Thomas and Bartholomew, for one sixth of the world's population. One sixth of the apostles came here. So renew the mind. What is repentance? It starts with a change of mind, leading to a change of heart, resulting in a change of direction. Opposite. That will bring a transformation in our lives. If you're reading the word, you're fasting and praying, but you better change. If you're not changing and there's no transformation taking place, something is dead. Either your faith is dead or your works are dead. Check on that. Have faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whatever Jesus says will change your life. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Verse 1 of chapter 1 of John, the gospel, and verse 4 he says, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So what word you are consuming by first renewing your mind must become through meditation, flesh and blood in your life. So as the word bride, I must decrease and Christ must increase. My word has to disappear. It's God's word that has to be manifest. Hallelujah. Faith and works go together. Works are the fruit of the faith seed. Hallelujah. Patience, long suffering, that's building our character. Faith will convert the sinner. We don't convert anybody. Again I'm saying, man doesn't convert anybody. It is God who converts. You only will sow and you will water. You may plow the ground of the heart, but you cannot convert. So if someone rejects you, they have not rejected you, they have rejected the Lord. That's your, not your onus, so please don't get rejected. If the door slams on your face, no problem. I was in sales, I was in marketing, when the door slams, you don't take it personally. They don't like the product. They, it's not that they don't like you. <laughs> they are rejecting Jesus. And rejecting Jesus will end you in a Christless eternity. Hallelujah. So this James was the Lord's brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He was part of the Jerusalem Council. He gets converted only after the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus gives him a personal attention. It says here, and that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. After resurrection, Jesus went to his brother and James got converted. Personal encounter. Wow, wow, wow. Tremendous. Paul is so wonderful. He wrote, okay. James wrote the letter. His brother Jude wrote the letter. But Jude says, the brother of James. Servant of Jesus, but the brother of James. Hallelujah. Remember your good works will not justify you. Hello? Your good works will determine God's election. Amen. 
God has called you. Man has not called you. God has called you. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 and 5. Thus says the Lord. He knew you. And then He ordained you, anointed you before you were born. So what ordination do you want? God is ordaining you for one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is anointed you. He's appointed you. But in the local church, we recognize it publicly. Because that's the responsibility of man. Hallelujah. Amen. Your good works will not secure your righteousness. Amen. Because only in Christ will you have the good works. Hallelujah. By the way, your good works do not substitute for the grace of God. Don't try to please God with your good works. Because you are saved, you produce good works. But you cannot produce good works to be saved. Big difference. Right? We are saved by, not good works, by grace, through faith. Not of our works, lest we would boast. The Christian's good works are rewarded. All your good works are going to be rewarded even if you give me a glass of water, you are rewarded. You are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are prepared for every good work and you are equipped and you are made complete. Hallelujah. The Christian's good works are done by God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And by your faith. Hallelujah. So God is involved in producing your good works, but through the channel of your faith. What's your faith? Your trust in God, your dependence on God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the five characteristics of Christians' good works it's designed for God's glory. Hallelujah. That your Father in heaven will be glorified. Amen. It's divinely called. It produces eventual glory to God. All your good works. You are going to be rewarded for your good works. Eternal rewards. Praise be to God. And the final perfection unto the Lord. Amen. I'm so happy that we are being perfected. Amen. And uh, God will not only reward you and He will perfect you, but He will not forget your labor of love. Beloved, whatever you do unto the Lord, for people, for one another, you do work behind the scenes. Some of you come and you help with the equipment, always selflessly working hard, all I can name names, but don't worry, you are being rewarded by the Lord. You may not get a tap from the pastor, you may not get a tap from man saying, oh, what a good work, good job done. Or you may hear the pastor say, good work for one and he's forgotten you. Don't worry about that, you are doing it unto the Lord. Amen, and you will surely be rewarded you will not be disappointed. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 58. For your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is very important for us to move on in God. Hallelujah. I am closing now. Amen. My time is up. But I want to tell you the test of faith. Amen. The test of faith. Your faith will be tested, but let it come forth as your glory. Amen. Because your faith is the eternal currency you will be living by. God lives by faith in the eternal now. And right now, 
in the crucible of time, we are being trained and prepared for a life of eternity by faith. That is heaven's currency, not the dollar bill, but faith. And today, we live not only by the dollar or the rupiah or the rupee, but we are living by faith. Not only full-time workers live by faith, the businessman is living by faith. Everyone is living by faith. Hallelujah. It is difficult. Times are difficult. But trust the Lord and He will not disappoint you. He will not let you down. He's your daddy. He's your savior. He's your provider. He's your protector. Hallelujah. The ten characteristics of God which the last three are triumphant. The first one, faith obeys the word. Got it clear? Come on, faith obeys the word. Say it. That's it. All found in James. The second one, Faith removes discrimination. No bias, no prejudice against anybody. All are equal. The rich and the poor, low caste, high caste, out caste, no caste, all are equal. Number three, faith proves itself by works. Your faith is not there. Number four, faith controls the tongue. What controls the tongue? What controls the tongue? Faith. What controls the tongue? Faith. With faith you speak in tongues. And your speaking in tongues will control your tongue. No man can tame the tongue. But speaking in tongues will tame your tongue. Sweet waters, not bitter waters. Number five, faith produces wisdom. Ask for wisdom from God. Pure, peaceable wisdom. Hallelujah. Number six, faith produces humility. When you are dependent on God, it will produce humility in your life. Next one, faith produces dependence on God. Now the last three is the triumph of faith. Eighth one, faith endures awaiting Christ's return. Your faith must look forward to the return of Christ. It's amazing some churches don't believe in the rapture because they want to be raptured to side. You are either raptured or you are raptured. Sorry to say that. Number nine, faith prays for the afflicted. And finally, faith confronts the erring brother. So I would say, wait for the return of the Lord. Your faith produce works which you will be rewarded. Hallelujah, you will sow treasure in heaven. Your faith must pray for the sick and all the needy ones. Hallelujah. And your faith must lead souls to Christ. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that every believer must be a producer. Every believer must be an asset in your hand to be used for your glory. Each one, preach one. Each one, teach one. Each one, reach one. Each one, preach one. When I say preach one, you wonder what that is. Deliver the other. 